Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today. We are very excited to talk about burnout today. And we have a very special guest with us. Allison is here with us. So it's going to be an awesome webinar. And I don't know if any of you were at our last mental health webinar. I think it was back in May. Um, we were going over our mental health survey results. And um, I'm just looking at them now. It looks like 87.9% of the social media managers that filled it out said they have experienced burnout, which is a big number. Um, the one positive from it is that it was down 7% from last year, two years ago, um, or last year. So we did make a little increase in it, but still a huge number of people feeling burnout. So we're really excited to talk about it today. Hi, Micah. Oh, Ashley, thank you. I did get my hair cut. Thank you. Awesome. So we'll start to get into it because I know we have a lot of awesome stuff to cover today. But what, before I get into it, since this is a mental health webinar, I want to check in with everyone. How are you feeling today? So we have this scale on the screen that goes from crappy, not so great, meh, okay, and great. So let me know in the chat how you're feeling today. I feel like I'm in the middle of like, okay and great. I think I'm in the middle there. Pretty good day so far. Um, but let me know in the chat how you're feeling today. Check in with yourself and um, we'll definitely get into it. Let's see. Madison, I feel like I'm between okay and great. That's awesome. Jennifer, Matt, I didn't sleep well last night. It's never, never a good feeling when you wake up and you're like, oh, I did not get enough sleep. <laughs> okay, meh, meh. Perfect. Thank you everyone for sharing. And then through this webinar, um, we definitely want to, you know, this is a safe space, share anything you want in the chat. Um, I always find our mental health webinars are really great because everyone is really sharing things they have been through, maybe things that have helped them. So definitely keep sharing in the chat. And before we get into it, I will mention we do have a newsletter. So our newsletter goes out every Monday to Friday, and you'll receive different things like social media news, free resources, trending audio. The list goes on and on. So I will put the link in the chat here. If you haven't um, registered yet, I will put it here. There we go, right in the chat. And then we also are on social, of course. We're on TikTok and Instagram. And we actually also have a um, Facebook group. So it's called Hayorka Community. There is about just over 4,500 social media managers in there. And we talk about all things social, all the updates. If you need advice on something, it's a really good place to go. So I will put the link to that in the chat. Jennifer, I just passed a newsletter on to another person. That's awesome. I'm glad you're sharing it. And yes, Madison, so I guess I should mention what Hey Orca is as well, if there's any new webinar goers here. Um, so yes, Hey Orca is a social media schedule built for teams. So there's a lot of great collaboration tools in there. Um, so I can definitely send our website through if you are new and would like to learn more. We will definitely put it there. And if you need closed captions turned on, um, you can do it through Chrome. So the instructions are here on the screen. So um, if you go to uh, your settings in the top right, there's an accessibility um, option, and then you can turn on live captions. Or if you're on a Mac, um, you can also go to your system um, settings there and turn it on. And I will mention this is being recorded and will be put on YouTube next week, which there will also be closed captions as well. Perfect. Perfect. 
And Madison, yeah, I can actually, so I'm gonna write your name down. I can get you in contact with one of our account managers who would definitely be able to chat with you about kind of how it compares to some of the other apps out there. So I'll make a note of that and I'll get them to reach out to you. Awesome. And we love to do giveaways in our webinars. So if you are new to this webinar, we have two different giveaways, which is really awesome. So the first one is a $15 Amazon gift card. So all you have to do to win this is to participate in the chat. So you can ask questions, share your thoughts. And then at the end, I'll be doing a random generator of names and picking someone out. So that one is super easy to win. And then this next one is you can win some Hey Orca swag. So if you are a Hey Orca customer, you have a chance to win Hey Orca hat, which you see on the screen here, or we also have t-shirts, which is really cool. So to qualify for that, all you have to do is write in the chat if you're a Hey Orca customer and maybe what your favorite feature is, and I'll be doing a random generator for that as well. So definitely Go to the chat if you're a customer and let me know what your favorite feature is. And of course, we do have webinars every single week. And so we have a really exciting one next week. We have Lori from Creative Pod is um, joining us and she's going to be talking about how to manage your TikTok account as an agency. So this one is going to be awesome, very tactical. So if you're at an agency, this one would be a really good one for you. So I will actually put the link there. Awesome. And if you want to register for that one, definitely go for it. And we have actually worked with Lori before on another webinar and it was really great. So looking forward to that one. All right, so we will get into it. Um, so I will introduce myself and then I can pass it over to Allison. So my name is Alyssa and I'm a community manager here at Hey Orca. So I help with all of our webinars, um, our different online communities like our Facebook group, our newsletter and anything like that. Um, but I can now pass it over to our special guest, Allison, and I will get her slides up here. Awesome. And I'll pass it over. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Allison Butler. I'm so excited to see so many of you on live. There's over 50 of you right now. So that's really exciting. Today, I'm going to spend the next little bit talking to you about how can we detect and fight burnout? How can we be better looking after ourselves as social media managers or whatever your specific role happens to be? This will be applicable for you if you're not as well. And burnout is something that I spend a lot of time talking about. Um, it's something that I've experienced for myself in a previous version of my career. And I actually really loved that several of you were connecting over your unique hearing challenges because earlier in my career, I worked in the world of hearing accessibility. So that's really cool and I love to see that. And um, hopefully everyone's captions are working really well for you. So I'm Allison Butler, and uh, I am a mental health advocate, a mental health first aid trainer, and I work with a lot of workplaces and individuals on just having great mental well-being at work and outside of work. And that includes like our mental health and wellness and also you know, not feeling stressed and burned out. So I'm really excited. I hope you're going to leave here um, with some great tips. I can see a few people already talking about, you know, having changed careers and things like that. So the first thing that I wanted to get to today is to just actually talk about burnout as a real thing. Uh, Alyssa mentioned that a lot of people have been recognizing, okay, hey, maybe I am burned out after uh, the previous Hey Orca kind of social media managers poll. But for anyone who might be newer or um, hasn't been thinking about this as much, the current statistics 
for North America are showing that about one in three people are experiencing burnout related to work. And I think that's real. I know <laughs> the statistic is massive. But when you really start to think about it, for me, it's actually not that surprising because I go in so many different types of workplaces. And I feel like COVID kind of didn't help us because um, it, it just kind of blurred the lines a little bit between like our work lives and our home lives. And I think particularly for all of you and the work that you do, um, when you're responsible for online stuff, and things that are kind of moving quickly, like social media, you can feel that need to be on all the time. And that can really lead to feelings of burnout. And so I want everyone to recognize burnout is real. The World Health Organization has actually acknowledged it as a workplace. They call it a phenomenon, <laughs> um, but as a workplace issue. And certainly we can burn out in our personal lives as well, but it's being recognized as something that's impacting a lot of people. And there's a lot of reasons why we can become burned out, I guess. So some of these reasons are that we might have or feel like we have an overwhelming workload. We can feel like, okay, I don't feel like I have a lot of control over the work that I'm doing or how many hours that I'm working. Um, the one that I love talking about the most is like we might not feel like, so, like we have a lot of support for other people you know, from other people in the workplace. Really interestingly, you know, I spent a lot of time in my career. I never had the title of social media manager, um, but I spent a lot of time doing the social media pieces of work because I worked for a nonprofit organization. And so I totally get that a lot of other people out there don't necessarily understand the role of social media, don't necessarily understand how long it takes to do certain pieces of work. And I think that's really important. Um, so not feeling that support or connection from other coworkers, or just not feeling like you're clicking or connecting with coworkers um, can be really important as well. I'm keeping a little peek at the chat as we go, but I might miss a few things. So, one of the really big pieces that I want you to be aware of, besides the fact that, okay, we know burnout is a really a, a real thing, is how can we know if we are at risk? So these are some of the warning signs. And on the next couple of slides, I'm also going to make it even a little bit more tangible in terms of what we should look for. So Here's some, and this is definitely not like a complete list, but it's some of the real common um, factors. So feeling overwhelmed about our work. And yes, Alyssa just said, I feel like it's really easy to let these warning signs slide until it's too late. Yes, because no one wants to feel kind of like weak right? It's like, oh, I can handle this. I've got this. And I always say like, we're always in that go, go, go mode. Um, and it can be really hard to, to pause and take that break. And Rachel, that's a great question. And I'll come back to that in a second. So some warning signs, feeling overwhelmed, um, having kind of that like anger or irritability. and it says here towards work, but the anger or irritability could kind of come out in our home lives or our personal lives too. Trouble sleeping can be a big one. And often that's just linked with like stress, anxiety, overwhelm, right? That trouble sleeping piece might creep in there. There's also other reasons why, you know, we might have trouble sleeping, but just for awareness, uh, kind of that like headaches, 
um, just feeling really sick. That was one of mine. I just like never felt physically well in my body. I was always feeling really kind of blah. Um, yeah, <laughs> Rachel, I know it's okay. Don't panic. <laughs> um, feeling detached, like, okay, I just don't care or I can't be bothered and feeling exhausted. And I always say it's sort of like the kind of tiredness that doesn't get fixed when you have a couple of nights of good sleep. You know, sometimes we feel tired or drained just because we've been up late and like partying or, you know, doing whatever, having lots of things to do. Um, but that exhaustion's kind of deeper. Yes. And Jennifer, you make a very good point. I also have a mental health diagnosis of depression. And the thing that I tell people that surprises people so much is how similar kind of like depression, anxiety, and burnout can look to one another. So I think that's really important. And Jennifer just made the point of, yeah, like you have to be careful like that one doesn't slide into the other. And Rachel asked the question, I think it was Rachel earlier, how long does it last? That's a really hard question to answer because it's a very personal thing. Um, so you can recover from burnout, but I cannot give you a timeline, right? It would depend on you specifically and kind of what strategies you're using to look after yourself. Um, but really, really important to just remember there's like no specific timeline there. Okay. So it's very real. And a huge thing that I advocate for with everyone is that and you'll see it on another slide. Sometimes I get excited and get ahead of myself. But like, we have to be looking after ourselves, right? Like we are the ones who are responsible for ourselves, right? It doesn't matter if there's so many things that can kind of impact our mental, mental and physical well-being just if we're run down like emotionally, physically, whatever that looks like. Oh, I just got a little notification that my internet. Okay, I'm hoping everyone can still hear me. What am yes, I you're good on my end. <laughs> Something popped up on my screen. Okay, um, so a quick little self check. So if you're making notes or you wanna kind of use this as a reminder, um, as kind of warning signs that you might be leaning towards burnout, right? So are you feeling really run down, um, drained physically or emotionally? Do you feel like you are getting really irritated by little things like by your coworkers, team members, you know, whatever that might look like? I always um, found for me, that the irritability was a really big sign as well. Or if I notice myself starting to feel really irritable, that's a warning sign of like, okay, maybe I need to put some of my tools into place and we'll get to that in a minute. Like feeling really misunderstood or unappreciated by coworkers. Um, <laughs> I'm sure pretty much everyone can relate to this, but feeling that there's more work to do than you have the ability to do, right? So just like that pressure of always more, always more. Um, or feeling like you don't have time to do, you know, the thing, do good quality because there's so much quantity. And coming back to that connection piece, maybe feeling like you don't have anyone to talk to about this stuff can be really important. So I wanted us to switch over to talking about how can we support ourselves if we are feeling burned out or if we feel like we might be on the road um, to that. And yes, I absolutely agree. Um, that especially in this world of social media, and if you're a team of one or even two, right, it can be really hard to shut it off because there's, there's always more, 
So yeah. we're going to talk about that a little bit. How do we draw the lines? Um, yes, and Sloan, I also worked for a non um profit for many, many years. And um, that compassion fatigue piece, I don't have that here in the presentation, but that is also very real. You know, that act of caring and supporting others, right? So keep that in mind. How can we support ourselves? So if you're making notes um, or if you're jotting things down, We'll make a little bit, I'm going to encourage you to make a little bit of a personalized kind of action plan for yourself. What's resonating with you? What do you maybe want to try in your own um, personal life? And just looking at a few chat things here. Um, I love, Sydney, that you said that compassion fatigue is the hardest part of being a manager. That's something that I've been um, talking about with managers a lot more in my world of work recently, um, that act of caring for and supporting others. Okay, so here's the thing. When our workloads are high, when there's always more to do, when we are feeling overwhelmed, our brains often will go to that place of, okay, I need to do more because I need to get on top of this pile, whatever it is, right? I need to try to stay on top of it. So I'm just going to do more. In the short term, that can seem like a great solution. But as I have found over many, many years, and as I'm sure some of you might be able to relate, the work usually never stops. So there's never an end point. Like you do more and then there's still always more there, right? So the solution here is that when we're feeling stressed, overwhelmed, burned out, the solution is never to do more. So we have to figure out how to look after ourselves. Um, and I mentioned this already, but I think it's really important. I call this section knowing yourself because it's about paying attention to the signs and being able to recognize, hey, you know, maybe I am doing a little bit too much right now, or maybe this is taking a toll on me. And we often ignore that, right? Because it's like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to keep doing more, I've got this, you know, I don't want people to think that I'm not capable of doing this. Um, and our body will tell us, right? We have those stress responses in our body and we'll usually feel certain kinds of ways that we've already been talking about. So knowing yourself and paying attention to how you're feeling and being able to recognize that is really, really important. And I know for myself, I've worked on this a lot over the last few years. And so being able to recognize, hey, whoa, like maybe I need to go at a different pace today is really important. The second piece of this might be surprising, but it's about building connection. So like even being here and being a part of this webinar with Hey Orca and, you know, having supportive conversation in the chat is building connection. Uh, Alyssa told us about the Facebook community, right? That's another great space to be building connection with people that are in similar roles to you, um, like-minded people, and um, yeah, just even being able to talk about things, especially if you are a team of one in your organization, where a lot of people may not fully recognize or understand what it is that you're doing. I'm having a little look. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Jennifer, I love that. Talking to someone who has a similar point of reference is invaluable. Yes. And I love this. I have a post-it note on my monitor that says, slow down. Yes. A business coach that I work with always says, slow down to speed up. Whoa. <laughs> uh, but it's true. It's true. Um, 
because when we give ourselves a little bit of time and space to rest, recoup, let our brains think, think things through, um, have a physical break, have a mental break, research, research really shows that breaks are super important to our productivity. Um, all of that is really, really important. Um, so something else I talk about a lot when I'm talking about burnout, stress, overwhelm is boundaries. And I could talk about this for hours, <laughs> but we're not going to today. I specifically wanted to mention two things with boundaries. How can we start to think about better boundaries with our time and with our workloads? So when I talk about that, oh, I'm just going to come back for a second. Sorry. Um, when I talk about time boundaries, okay, what does that look like? Are you, I'll ask you a couple of questions to kind of set yourself up to think about this. Are you making time for breaks in your day? If you are, that's fantastic. I meet so many people who say like, yeah, I eat my lunch while I'm still working, um, things like that. So are you making time to like get up from your computer, move, move away, go to a different room, like with no technology, for example? Um, the other time boundary that I see with so many people and not just in this industry um, is do you have a shut off time when you're going to finish work? Now, there might always, you know, occasionally there might be something that happens where you need to work <laughs> vigorous notes. I love it. Um, when you have to work later. But I really encourage you to think about what is your work finish time? Especially if you work remotely, especially if you're a team of one, especially if you can just like, you know, if you could just keep going and working forever. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sabrina. It's like with so much love. Um, so I also, like I will raise my hand and say, I also have a problem with taking breaks or I did. I've gotten a lot better at it. I used to like really wear that busy badge. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm so busy. I don't need to take breaks or like, I don't have time to take breaks because I'm so busy. Um, but then I wasn't well. <laughs> so I've really learned how to do that. And for you, I would love you to not be in a place where you're not well. You know what I mean? Um, so really think about that. What's the end point? And then we really need to get, once we have that time boundary, we need to really think about, okay, well then what am I doing with my technology? Um, so I'm not like sneaking looks every five minutes. Um, Jasmine had a great tip there in the chat around iPhone focus. Yeah, like different focus settings, et cetera, on your phones, on your technology, really letting you work in specific times. And then with your workload, I have this other slide here. She's kind of saying no. Um, with your workload, how are you... Um, allowing work to come to you. And, and when I say that, I mean, are there multiple people bringing um, work to you? If so, just make sure you're communicating really clearly of like, hey, I have X, Y, or Z on my plate. How urgent or important is this? I always find people feel like, A, everything is a five alarm fire, like it needs to happen immediately. And I also find that most people think that everything in social media takes 30 seconds. It's like, hey, can you just do this? Can you just do that? Can you just do this? Um, so for me, it's also really clearly communicating the boundary of, yeah, I can do this. I estimate that I think it will take, you know, an hour or two hours or whatever to do this. Um, you know, how, how urgent or important is this? Um, so boundaries, uh, we, could, we could do a whole separate presentation just on boundaries, but I just want to give you a taste of that, right? What do you want to put in place for yourself? Because that's the first thing, is to make it really intentional. 
um, of, okay, these are the boundaries that I want to put in place. And then actually practicing them is the hard part, right? Um, okay, I'm, people are making some really good suggestions here. Yeah, and like, it's not about saying, no, I'm not doing that, right? It's just about figuring out how important is it? Can I do it tomorrow or the next week or whatever, right? So really figuring out those boundaries. And I really want you to recognize that your wellness has to be a priority because when we're sick, when we're burned out, when we're not in a great mental space, we cannot do our jobs properly, right? Or well. And so really be recognizing, okay, hey, I need to make small steps. Jocelyn, I would suggest, and you can feel free to reach out to me later too. Alyssa's going to share my LinkedIn. Um, but I would suggest if people are used to you just saying yes to everything, just start practicing small baby steps. I feel like that was actually my life before, right? I just did everything. And um, yes, Bianca said like writing things out, that works really well. Um, so I love that. Your wellness has to be a priority. No one else is going to prioritize it except you, right? And so that's something that I often remind myself of daily. And here's the thing. We are human, so therefore we are not perfect. And I think something that I struggled with for many, many years was feeling like I was failing at trying to have better boundaries, for example, or trying to have a better relationship with my technology. And then what I realized is different days, I'm going to get this, you know, some days will be better than others. We're always going to get off track. The key is the intention behind it, right? So for me now, every day I get up, I kind of assess how am I feeling, just like Alyssa did at the beginning of this webinar. And when I can tell, okay, how am I feeling? What kind of day is this going to be? What do I maybe need to do to support myself? And every day gets to be a new day. So if I had a day where I felt like that one kind of went really off track, well, today's a new day and I can start at that again. Um, Rebecca, that's a, that's a great suggestion, keeping things um, in track of by due dates. And if you know those things, that's amazing. Um, some people may not, right? I know for me, I would often just have a lot of things thrown at me and it was up to me to kind of sift through that. But if you're feeling like everything is immediate, urgent and a priority, that becomes really, really challenging. Mm -hmm. So to kind of clue up our time together, I want you to choose kind of one small thing that you want to focus on or work on that's going to help you um, work on preventing burnout. So maybe it's taking a proper lunch break without your technology away from your desk, or maybe it is that small act of deciding, okay, how am I going to say I can't do this right now in a completely polite way or asking what a timeline is on something and practicing that. Um, because I think the more we practice it, the easier it becomes. And then we develop our own style of figuring that out. And communication is everything. And I often find when we really communicate to others, um, we'll get that back. So I love that. So really think about what do you want to focus on Someone mentioned earlier about having a sticky um, or a post-it note on their computer. I love that. If you want to write down the thing that you want to focus on and stick it up on your wall or on your computer, that would be amazing. And just before we leave during our time together, I know this is such a short snippet of you know what you 
might we could talk about with burnout. If this is something that you feel like you want to work on, you know, more in your own life, I do have a program. It's called the Energy Answer. Um, I love it. And basically it's monthly audio workshops where you can listen in your own time, you can listen while you're on your lunch break walk. Um, so the workshops are all audio based. You can listen along and we really dive into all of these topics like how do I say get better at saying no? You know, how do I take this time for breaks? How do I spend less time on my technology? So um, if you go to my website and I just have the circle there, <laughs> that's the spot where you can click on and check out that program. It's workshops over 12 months, but I started in June. So there's already several um, audio workshops there that you can take advantage of and more come out every month. And because I'm so happy that there's so many of you here, you can get 25% off if you put Hey Orca into the checkout. Um, oh, Madison, I don't know who said that, but I use the word overwhelm every single day. <laughs> and it's absolutely uh, true. And um, I think overwhelm is a very real thing as well. So uh, I know Alyssa shared my LinkedIn previously. Oh, thanks, Alyssa. Uh, I'm really active on LinkedIn. So if you would like to connect with me there, I would love that. Please go ahead. I post regularly about mental health, wellness, burnout, stress, all of the things. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's my website. I'm on Instagram as well. So you can connect with me wherever you want. Please feel free to reach out if you have any specific questions um, and use the community that Hey Orca has available to you to be connecting with one another. I think that's a really powerful benefit that's available to you that can help you prevent feeling some of those feelings of stress, overwhelm, when you can connect into that like-minded community. So I am so happy that there's over 50 of you still here. Um, I hope you found it really useful and informative. And uh, I look forward to staying in touch. And thanks, Alyssa, for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Allison. I feel like that was a really great session and I feel like it was very tactical. Like I can walk away with this action plan to kind of put in place and try new things. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I judging by the chat, I think everyone enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing um, what you've been through, um, anything you've experienced. So thank you so much for sharing. It's always good to share because Sometimes you can feel like you're the only one feeling burnout, but really a lot of people feel it just like Allison so said. So common and I yeah. see it in every single workplace that I'm in. So you exactly. are not alone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's good to talk about it and definitely a conversation we want to keep having. So thank you so much, Allison, for everything today. And now that we're at the end, I will do the two giveaways that we have. So I have everyone's name here in a generator. So we'll start with the Amazon gift card. So let me do that now. It's spinning. All right, the Amazon winner is Rebecca McKinnon. So Rebecca, congratulations. You're our Amazon gift card winner. So I will be reaching out to you after this webinar. And then now we are going to do the giveaway for the Heorka merch. So let me do that one. And the winner for the Heorka merch is Hunter Trisnicki. I might be saying your last name wrong, so I apologize. But Hunter, you are the winner of the Hey Orca merch. So super exciting. I'll be reaching out to Rebecca and Hunter after this webinar and we'll be getting you your goods. But thank you so much everyone for coming and we will definitely do more mental health webinars in the future because it's really important to keep this conversation going. So thank you so much everyone for joining and thank you so much, Allison, for being here with us. 
And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.